Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining. Today we are going to talk about diagnostic processes. And to be more specific, we're going to talk about processes that we use when we have a whole bunch of trouble codes and a whole bunch of symptoms. We get a lot of feedback from you guys and a lot of it is, hey, I got 10 trouble codes. I got 20 symptoms. What do I do? Where do I start? And no matter your skill level, this can be a pretty daunting task. So we're gonna to start today by showing you a process that we use that can help simplify the process altogether and make it a big problem, kind of a smaller issue. Now, before I get started, make sure that if you like what you see so far, you hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon to get notified when we make another video and help out the channel. So what we have here today is we have a 2003 Ford F-150. And this car came to us with a PCM that needed to be programmed and it was from another place that diagnosed it as a bad PCM. And we looked under the hood, we did kind of a visual inspection, we noticed it had a lot of new parts. And as you can see here, there is quite a few trouble codes. So before we decided to just go ahead and program that PCM, we wanted to kind of just go through our process quick just to make sure that the place that wanted us to program the PCM was in the right ballpark and we weren't just going after it because once that PCM is programmed, you cannot, uh, you can't unprogram it and most of the time it's, it's yours to keep. So the first part of our process is we want to group these trouble codes, which I kind of already did here into maybe symptoms or codes that may be related to each other. So if we look here, these codes right here are all O2 sensor heater codes. So we kind of have these grouped in one group here. And if you look at these codes here are all transmission solenoid codes and they are circuit codes. And these heater codes are also circuit codes, I should add. And then we have a EGR code, two EVAP system codes, and an AC pressure switch code. Now, that's a lot of codes and that's a lot of symptoms. And when you look at this as a whole, it can be pretty confusing to diagnose. So what we want to do with our process is once we have this thing kind of separated into, you know, different systems and different issues, let's just pick one and go after that one problem instead of looking at it in such a wide spectrum. So just let's just go off the top of our list here and we have O2 sensor heater. And what I want to do here is just pick one code to go after. Let's say we go after the P0141 and that is an O2 sensor heater code. So what do we do first? Let's look at a wiring diagram, right? So we'll pull up our wiring diagram here. And as you can see, we have our two sensors here. And we actually found that the bank one sensor one was the easiest sensor to get to. And it also looked like that sensor has been replaced. So that's where we started our diagnosis. Now with any O2 sensor heater code, looking at the wiring diagram, we have to make sure that it has power here, right? So we checked here with the key on, obviously, and we had no power there. So we're not getting any power to our heater. So what do we do next? Let's follow the wiring diagram, right? It looks like the wiring diagram follows here, goes all the way up to this K. But before we go that far, look what else we can see here. It looks like it also splices to another oxygen sensor, the EGR solenoid, which did throw a code, the EVAP PERD solenoid, which is one of the codes, and also an EVAP vent valve, which is also one of our codes. It looks like we're onto something here and we're only going after the one problem so far. But we have to find K to see where the rest of this wiring diagram goes. So we'll go here and we'll go find K on our other diagram. It says 24.3, so we'll pull that up here. And looking at this wiring diagram, we find K right on the bottom here. And it goes directly to a fuse right here, fuse number 23. Logically, right, we're going to check that fuse. And guess what, guys? That fuse was blown. That fuse had no continuity. We put a new fuse in there. And guess what? Problem was fixed. So just like any blown fuse though, we weren't completely convinced. We had to drive this thing for a while. We drove this thing for a couple days. We let the customer have this thing back. It has been driven for a few months and it has not come back. And guess what? Not only did it fix that oxygen sensor here, it fixed all of our problems. Remember, we had all these codes here. Every single one of these DTCs is now gone from the PCM. And this thing was just about to get a PCM replaced with the transmission solenoid codes being repaired, the symptom of the transmission and limp mode is also gone, and the symptom of the check engine light is gone without any trouble codes stored. So this just goes to show you that just following a simple diagnostic process, kind of simplifying a big problem and taking it into smaller problems can sometimes get you to the right direction without thinking too much. Because you know, if you go after all those codes at once, you may have like smoke coming out of your ears or something. I've been there before. So now that we've shown this case study, let's go to an actual car we have here 
we have a Chevy Cruze and we're gonna pull up the scan tool here and see what codes we have here and follow this process live. Okay, so this is the 14 Cruze with the 1.8 liter motor. This is the non-turbocharged motor. We're gonna go to engine, go to our codes menu here. Okay, not too bad, right? We have a P0335 and a P0597. It is a crankshaft position sensor circuit code and a thermostat heater control circuit code. Now, remember, this is a thermostat heater circuit code, not like your average uh, 128 or something that has to do with the temperature. It actually has a heater issue. So not too bad. We have two codes and you're thinking, do we really need a process for this? But the codes are not the problem in here. The problem is the symptoms that we got from the customer. So I'm gonna pull the symptoms up here and you can see this thing has quite a few issues. We have a poor start, a hesitation, stalling, low power, no tack, check engine light, and a coolant smell. And that is quite a few symptoms to go after. So let's start by getting our codes written in here, right? We got a P0335 and a P0, what was that code again? I'm actually gonna have to go back and look. I'm not really familiar with it. We got a P0597. Okay, so this is our thermostat circuit code. So let's kind of group these together, right? So we have a poor start. I definitely could be caused by a bad crank sensor. I don't think the thermostat heater circuit's gonna cause that. Um, same with hesitation, stalling, low power, no tack. Now the check engine light can obviously be caused by both of these problems here. I would definitely put that in the same group and coolant smell here. And now you might wanna put the coolant smell with the thermostat, but remember this is a circuit code and circuit codes aren't gonna cause a uh, coolant smell. So maybe we have a leak somewhere. So this is something we might want to look into further before we go into our diagnosis. Now, like anything, before we start, we definitely wanna do a visual inspection under the hood. So. Let's look under the hood here once and see what we can find. Okay, so before we look at our two problems here, our crank sensor problem and our thermostat problem, we just wanna take a visual inspection to make sure we don't see anything obvious that might save us a whole bunch of time. So we're gonna look at our thermostat wiring here, kinda of just shake some wires around, just look for anything obvious that you might see. And just looking around here, okay, we can actually see right here, we looks like we have some cooling stains and it looks like we actually found a little bit of a coolant leak here. And now you see, that's another problem that we're glad that we looked at before we got too far into this thing. And you know, just check anything that you might see at, hey guys, look at this actually, holy cow. So this intake boot is actually torn. And this can create a massive problem because the mass airflow sensor is right here and any air that sneaks in this crack, that's gonna get into the engine without uh, getting read by the mass airflow sensor. And I can kind of tell you why that can be an issue. Let's go back to our screen here. Okay, so on top of our symptoms and our codes that we have grouped here, our visual inspection found a coolant leak. So we can go for our coolant leak here. It's definitely gonna be uh, the issue that is causing a coolant smell. So we kind of got that taken care of. Now we kind of blamed all of our symptoms on this P035, or P0335 crank sensor code but remember, we found that air intake boot. And any time that air intake boot is cracked after the mass airflow sensor, it's gonna allow air to get in unmetered, and that's gonna cause fuel trim issues. It can cause a lot of these symptoms. Could you have a poor start? Possibly. Could you cause a hesitation? Yes, they are very common to cause a hesitation. So if we go through our symptoms again, a lot of these could be the air intake boot. The no tack issue, that is most likely going to be a crankshaft position sensor problem, but good thing that we went and looked at a visual inspection on this thing, because if we would have just fixed that crank sensor problem, most likely that intake boot would have caused some of these symptoms and we would have had a comeback. Now, I hope this process helped you out and I hope you try to use it when you have these same type of issues. It is easy to take a big problem and kind of make it smaller into groups where it's more manageable to diagnose. If you liked what you've seen here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and then we'll notify you when the videos come out where we actually diagnose the other symptoms on this car. And as always, thanks for watching.